Hello there, my name is Avarus, and I welcome you to a new series about an expansion mod that I'm currently working on for Fable The Lost Chapters. It's a project that I like to call Fable The Lost Content, where I try to restore as much cut content as I can and make it playable. It also includes some additional content and features that I made myself to help flesh the game out a bit more and hopefully give the player more replay value. Ever since I made my previous videos showing off this project, I got a lot of positive feedback from you guys here on the channel commenting about how excited you are to see the progress I was making. Everyone's input has been really meaningful and has been a big motivation for me to continue this project. Not only that, but a writer named Carrie Talbot at PC Games N even wrote an article about my mod which probably explains the amount of exposure the project got once I initially announced it. While I am extremely grateful of all this, it was obviously a lot more attention than I was expecting to get for such an early project. However, I tried my best to not let it pressure me into rushing anything. As a way to show my appreciation for your support on the project, I decided to put some time aside and play through this mod again, but from the very beginning. This time, I thought it would make a bit more sense to talk over the gameplay so I can show some of the new changes that I added and explain my thought process on some of these recent updates. So, what is Fable The Lost Content? If you aren't sure what I am talking about, then there will be links in the description showing off earlier builds of this mod, along with a link that will take you to my Nexus mod page for the project. But, for the purposes of this video, Fable the Lost Content is an expansion mod that I am creating myself using the Chocolate Box and Shadownet modding programs. These are tools that were created by the Fable TLC mod forums in the early 2000s and allow you to edit the game files. I've been a follower of the modding community for a very long time, however I only just recently tried to actually learn how to mod the game. I think it was either 2017 or 2018 that I decided to try it out for myself, and my hope is that this mod will be a melting pot for all my experience I have learned over the course of those years. As mentioned before, the purpose of this mod is to restore cut content for the game, something that I am really passionate about in regards to Fable. This is done through things such as unused dialogue, cutscenes, items, whatever can be found in the game files basically. That being said, I know I can't restore everything, so to supplement this I decide to add some of my own content in there to help give it a bit more variety. There are currently understandably some bugs in this mod, so if you aren't entirely sure if you would like to play the mod, or want to see what you are getting yourself into, then the Nexus mod page will contain all the information that you need, such as how to install the mod, plenty of images to show what gets added into your game, and I even made three older videos showing off smaller updates, so if you want to see a video like this one but without me speaking, then that's a good place to start. Don't forget to read the mod description or the readme file for instructions on how to install the mod. In case you find it easier to learn by visualising, like I do, then here is a quick demonstration on how to install it. First, you're going to want to make sure you have a vanilla version of Fable. This is just a fresh installation of the game files with no prior modifications to it. As you can see, I have a backup of this on my hard drive, so I can just delete the one I'm currently using and paste a fresh version of the game without needing to actually reinstall it. You can even do it with the Steam version because it has no DRM, which is what I use. This means that you don't have to be signed into Steam to actually play or modify the game. Once your fresh installation of Fable is all set up, you're ready to actually start modding the game. To start with, you're going to need to install the Chocolate Box program. If you aren't sure how to install Chocolate Box, I have a sort of outdated guide video on my channel. If you have any problems with trying to install it, then feel free to comment below on the video and I will try my best to help. Anyways, this is the only real requirement to play the mod, since the Chocolate Box program will open up your level files and allow you to change them. This is done by opening up the program for the first time, and when it asks if you would like to sort out your modding environment, you simply click yes. 
This program will also be helpful for you if you decide to create your own mods, as it gives you access to all the game's maps and assets. It's what I use to make this exact mod, so I can't guarantee any other method of installation will work. Now that you know a chocolate box is working correctly, it is time for the easy part. Simply exit the program and find the folder for the mod that you just downloaded. If you are watching this video, then hopefully it's for my The Lost Content mod. There should be a particular folder inside of the RAW file called The Mod. L like, it's literally called The Mod. Open up that folder and copy the contents to your game's file directory, so that it replaces your game files. It will ask to replace all the files you've just dropped in there. Simply click yes, and then congratulations, you finally installed the mod. A good way to check and make sure if this mod is installed correctly is either open up Lookout Point or open up Star Oakville and you'll notice it like a difference straight away. Now that you understand how to install the mod in case you ever feel like playing it for yourself, let's jump into the actual game. If you installed the mod correctly, then it should be fine for you to run the game in any way that you prefer, whether that be Steam, through Chocolate Box itself, or just by using Fable.exe, so long as you are doing it through the same build of the game that you just modified. Unless you accidentally skipped them, then the first thing you're probably going to notice is how I changed the logo cinematics that play every time you load up the game. I added the Big Blue Box Studios logo cinematic that was removed from the TLC version of the game, along with adding my own short clip that plays right at the end of the Microsoft logo cinematic. I did this by editing the video files that can be found in the game's data folder. Since there are only two files which the game currently uses to play these cinematics, I decided to just extend them with a video editing program like Adobe Premiere Pro. This means that if you skip the first video file, then you'll be skipping both the Big Blue Box and the Linehead Studios logo cinematic. And if you skip the next video file, then you'll be skipping the Microsoft logo cinematic, along with my custom cinematic. Everything else should be pretty much the same, such as the introduction trailer and the main menu screen at the start of the game. Although I do plan on changing the logo at the top so that it says Fable the Lost Content instead of Fable the Lost Chapters. Anyways, the first thing I recommend doing is creating a new character anytime you play a newly modded game that changes the level files, because Fable does this weird thing where it sort of saves the game world and your character as two separate entities. Sometimes things from your previous save can leak into this new game world, and vice versa. It's a bit hard to explain, and I'd be lying if I said that I truly understood the ins and outs of everything, but the gist of it is that your previous save and a newly modded game are most likely not compatible with each other. This is why you need to start a new game so that you now have a compatible profile and game world. Once we've created a new profile and tweaked all of our settings, we can now start a new game. Stay tuned for the next episode of Fable the Lost Content, where we'll be going through all the changes I've made to the first map that you visit, which is called Start Oakville.